In this video I'm going to walk you through the basics of using the timeline in ZBrush 4 to create more complicated animations than you can with the standard turntable feature in ZBrush. We'll begin by opening up the movie menu and docking that to the tray. The movie menu contains all of the features that control the animation of the timeline. We'll go ahead and show the timeline by clicking the timeline submenu and then clicking the show button. Now let's take a look at the anatomy of the timeline itself. There are three elements to the timeline. There's the scope at the top, there's the timeline itself, and then there's the time slider down below that with a readout in terms of frames and seconds. To the left of the timeline we can see the track name. Now this represents the property that will be animating on the timeline at any given point in time. There are a number of different properties that we can actually animate and we can see which ones in the timeline tracks menu. So we'll go over to the movie menu open up the timeline track submenu and then here you can see the individual tracks that we can edit. Now ZBrush is fairly smart about how it handles the timeline track selection. We can click any one of these timeline tracks here in the menu and you'll notice that it updates over in the timeline itself. However, if we simply click and drag to rotate the camera you'll notice that the camera track is now selected. So ZBrush will make changes and update the track selection in an intelligent manner. Let's talk about how to put keyframes onto the timeline and manipulate them. Keyframe creation is very simple. Simply click to create a new keyframe. The filled orange circle represents the currently selected keyframe. You can delete keyframes by simply clicking and dragging them directly off the timeline. To move a keyframe, simply select it, then left click and drag, and reposition it anywhere you'd like along the timeline. Let's go ahead and create a very simple animation. We'll do a linear zoom in. So I'll begin by deleting all of the keyframes, and then I'm going to place a keyframe at the very beginning of the timeline. I'll zoom in. position my camera to the view that I'd like and somewhere later along the timeline drop in a new keyframe. Now if we click and drag the time slider you'll see the animation take place. We can actually preview this so we don't have to manually scrub it by holding down the shift key and then left clicking in this area with the time slider. To end the preview animation, simply tap the control key or the escape key. Now, if you'd like to actually record your animation, simply use the control and shift key and then left click in the area below the timeline. This will record the frames to memory and allow you to play them back later. Once your movie is finished recording, you can play it back with the controls in the movie menu. So we'll go ahead and go to the movie menu and choose the play movie button. Now when the movie begins playing, you'll notice that there's a ZBrush logo that appears at the beginning. This is called the title. And then in the lower right corner, we also see a ZBrush logo. That's the overlay image. We can turn these off with the controls at the bottom of the movie menu. I'll go ahead and close down the timeline tracks and the timeline for right now so we can take a look at the settings. The overlay image controls the image that appears down in the lower right corner. So we'll go ahead and reduce the opacity all the way to zero. If we play back the movie again, you'll notice that the overlay image is no longer in the lower right corner. The beginning and ending image is controlled through the title image. We'll go ahead and open that up and simply reduce the fade in and fade out time to zero. This eliminates effectively the title image. You might notice that the cursor does appear in the animation. To eliminate the cursor altogether, 
we need to open up the modifiers menu and reduce the cursor size from 4, which is its default, down to 0. There are actually three types of keyframes we can use on the timeline to help control the playback for our animation. Right now we're using the standard keyframe type, and this animation currently spans over a series of about 9 seconds. I'm going to drag this keyframe a little closer to the start, so in this case, about 4 seconds. Now, as I preview this animation, You'll notice that the animation happens in a very linear fashion. In other words, it doesn't slow down or ease in and ease out as we would normally do in a traditional animation package. To create an ease in and ease out effect, we need to create a new special keyframe. I'll go ahead and cancel that preview by pressing down the escape key. I'm going to drop a new keyframe onto the timeline and I'm going to position it close to the keyframe that I want to ease into. Now, once it's on the timeline, I'll hold down the control key and click on it. You'll notice that its icon is now changed to a circular gradient. The closer the ease in keyframe is to the keyframe you want to adjust, the more pronounced and dramatic the effect will be. I'll go ahead and preview the effect again by holding down the shift key and left clicking below the timeline. You'll notice now that the animation happens very quickly at the beginning and then slows down as it approaches that keyframe. If we move the ease in keyframe further away and preview it again, you'll notice that the effect is a little less pronounced, resembling more closely the linear animation that we had before. I'll go ahead and pause that and I'll move the keyframe back and closer to the one I want to adjust. Now, there's another type of keyframe that we can use, and it's called a cut keyframe. It allows us to simply hold on the last keyframe until a new keyframe is reached. Let's take a look at how that works. I'll begin by zooming out. And then placing a new keyframe onto the timeline. Now, traditionally ZBrush will interpolate from keyframe to keyframe. So if I drag the time slider, you'll see the motion happen. If I wanted the motion to stop at this keyframe and then simply jump to the next keyframe, we can do that with a cut keyframe. In order to create a cut keyframe, we select the keyframe, hold down the Alt key, and then click it again. You'll notice that its icon is now changed to an orange square. When ZBrush comes in contact with a cut keyframe, it will pause the animation for the duration and then it will jump when it reaches the next keyframe. If you're doing detailed work on the timeline with a number of keys positioned close to one another, you can zoom into those keys. In this case, I've got the cut keyframe selected. I'll go ahead and click it one more time. You'll notice that the timeline zooms in to that keyframe. We can then navigate using either the time slider or the scope at the top of the timeline. To zoom out again, simply select the keyframe once more by left clicking on it. The timeline will be zoomed out. You'll notice right now that the timeline actually has a number of different seconds on it, going all the way from 0 to 30. Now the length of the timeline can be controlled in the timeline options. Down at the bottom we'll see a duration slider. It's currently defaulting to 30 seconds. Simply adjusting this, let's say to 10 seconds, will shorten the timeline. Now you'll have to drag the time slider to get it to update. In this case now, instead of the animation happening at roughly 4 seconds, as it did before, it's now happening in just about a second and a half. The nice thing about this is that we don't have to actually manually move the keyframes in order to retime our animation. We can simply set the animation up as we like, adjust the keyframe spacing, and then adjust the overall duration later on. When you're finished with your animation, you can go ahead and choose the export option and then save the movie out as a QuickTime movie. To delete the active movie, go ahead and choose the delete button. 
you'll notice that in terms of the overall recording size, we have three options. The default is medium, which is 50% of the canvas size. You also have the option to record at large, which would be 100% of the canvas size, or small at one quarter percent of the canvas size. By default, ZBrush will record your object in whatever render mode you have currently set. In this case, you'll notice that we're in preview render mode. Therefore, any animation that we record will be done in a preview render. We can force the render into a different mode, for example, best preview render, by simply creating that render first prior to recording the animation. For example, if I drag my timeline slider back to the beginning and do a best preview render, and then hold down the control key and the shift key and click down below the timeline, each frame in our animation will now be recorded using the best preview render. I hope you found this introduction to the timeline useful. Please see the other videos in this series for additional ways that you can use ZBrush 4 to enhance your demo reel.